hormones and all. It's not towards chemistry, you don't worry, you know, problem towards that. But they more can you can have a and understand concept there. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see here, last week I already summarized this. I'm just going to go fast on this. Endocrine system is a system that controls the body activities by releasing chemical called hormones, right? I already told you guys what is hormone and all. Hormones are specific chemical messenger molecules in the bloodstream and that can regulate the activities of organs and tissues. It's synthesized by a special of specialized cells or endocrine glands. So who is the one synthesizing these hormones is the specialized glands, okay? So difference between the endocrine system and the nervous system, I taught you guys already. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Nervous system, endocrine system, controls voluntary and involuntary actions, okay? So you can see over here, how uh, nervous system could you how did it transmit the electrical signals through nerve impulses? Endocrine system pula it transmit towards here their medium is bloodstream and nervous system can cepat. Endocrine system is a very slow process because the hormonal changes in your body pun takes time, right? So messengers are carried between specific locations, nervous system. Here they put satu sumber, let's say from one gland, it is going towards the whole body. Let's say from your estrogen secreting organelle towards the whole body or your testosterone secreting uh, organelle towards the or the cell towards the whole body. All right. So response or effects are temporary for nervous system. Response or effects are long lasting. So endocrine, let's say in a hormone, um, let's say the growth hormone, it's not a temporary effect, right? It's a long lasting and the response and effects are pretty um, for a long time, lah, right? You're gonna be not gonna be tall for one day and then the next day you're gonna get shot. So that is the hormones. Okay, so the roles of endocrine system, I have a growth, reproduction, metabolism, menstrual cycle, development of secondary sexual characteristics. And then endocrine system and the nervous system work together to regulate the balance of internal environment through the process called homeostasis. So homeostasis to upper I bagi tahu the balancing right of your body. Let's say if it's too hot, how is it gonna balance? If the environment is too hot, you will sweat, right? So uh, that is homeostasis, your action done by your body to release uh, water droplets from your body to cool down the body. So that is homeostasis. And if you're too cold pula macam mana, you'll be start shivering. So if you're shivering, what happens then? Body vibrating, right? Vibrating is creating heat. So the heat, when you're shivering, okay? That is what um, keeps your body warm, right? So I hope you understand that. And endocrine system complements um, the nervous system in carrying out various body processes, meaning by having this endocrine system, here we are able to conduct multiple body processes without us even realizing. Okay, what is your question, Tadi? What is ductless? Uh, what does ductless gland mean? Okay, so ductless gland, dear, Maksudnya is like a secreting gland. Okay, dia adalah satu um, part of the endocrine system that secretes hormones, okay, directly into the blood. So, dia ada lah major gland in the endocrine system macam pineal gland, pituitary gland, pancreas, ovaries, testes, thyroid. So, your testes, your ovaries are all glands. Your thyroid uh, is also a gland. So, hypothalamus and adrenal gland semua, these are um, glands which uh, because they secrete directly into the blood. Bukan 
melalui tubes atau ducts. So soalan awak apakah itu ductless gland kan? Okay, gland tu is a secretion punya uh, part lah. Contoh macam factory right? Okay, factory usually have uh, pathways nak, nak transport a liquid kan? To transport something via a tunnel ke or via a huge metallic um, transporter ke but here ductless gland meaning we don't have a tubing or a duct or anything we just uh, secrete directly into a the bloodstreams so that is what they mean by ductless glands okay so faham tak ha that is how dia glands ni ada banyak sweet glands Salivary glands, memory glands, women who are having babies have memory glands, uh, memory glands, so they secrete milk. Endocrine glands that we are studying, they secrete hormones. So this is how our body uh, works, lah, right? So endocrine glands are ductless glands, meaning they release substance, they make hormone directly by the bloodstream. They do, don't need an, an uh, extra pathway or passage. So that is what it means by ductless gland. It's any glands of the endocrine system that secretes hormone directly into the bloodstream. Okay. So I hope that um, you understood the explanation. Okay. So with that, I'm going to share with you a slide presentation. Is there any other questions? Ada apa-apa soalan lagi tak? Clear. Great. Okay. So, what I'm going to share with you is window. Alright, so can you see what I am sharing with you? Okay, nampak kan? Right. So, with a slide presentation like this, it must be much more easier. Okay, so moving on. Basically, 3.3, basically you're going to analyze the roles of hormones in your body. Okay, so you're going to faham apakah itu hormone, apakah itu endocrine system is, uh, why the endocrine system is necessary, Physiological process not directly regulated by nervous system. Describe how the endocrine system complements the nervous system. Describe briefly coordination involving both nervous system and endocrine system in a fight or flight situation. As I stated, both system may they work together in a lot of situations. What's it comment? I love pictures. Yeah, great. <laughs> okay, so state the effects of hormonal imbalances. Apa can jadi kalau we have hormonal imbalances. So a quick example regarding that would be when you have hormonal imbalances, contoh uh, your secretion of certain hormones yang kurang, like let's say your growth hormone kurang, you might face stunted growth, okay? If your, um, let's say your estrogen hormone is too much, even males might uh, have the emotions or the anger or the, the whatever female go through during the menstruation, right? Other than secreting blood, they will experience as well emotional feelings, right? They might get angry. Uh, so those things all happen when you have hormonal changes. And also the state, the use of hormones in medicines. So medicines, we induce hormonal packages into some people to cure them as well. Okay, now hormonal control, the endocrine system. So you're gonna notice that there are only gonna be few parts in our body where these hormones, are, these glands are actually located. Okay, so these are the parts. Now, a chemical communication system is made up of at least two types of cell. One cell produces and releases the hormone, message release, Second cell with receptor, receives message, target cell activated. So, faham tak? 
dia punya communication system dia made up at least two types of cell. So the first cell dia akan menghasilkan dan keluarkan hormon. It's going to synthesize and release the hormones. So let's say that is like the message that the message is going to released from one cell. The second cell pula receptors. Apakah masuk receptor? Right? So your phone is a receptor meaning it's receiving a message from a different phone. Right? At the same time, your phone is able to release as well. So that is a communication system, right? Same in our body also when it comes to chemical communication system. Kita ada dua cell that one is going to release, one is going to receive. Apakah, what happens when it receives the message, the chemical um, signals are being received, what will happen? It will target the cell, okay, to trigger the cell to activate. So as you can see here, the secreting cell, okay, and when the hormones are released, the message akan disampai kepada target cells, so the receptors akan receive and they will go through changes. So receptors are very specific. When it comes to biology, right, enzyme ke, receptors ke, mostly everything, DNA ke, everything is very, very specific. That is why we are very unique by ourselves. That is why we cannot just take a hormones from um, monkeys or pigs or a fish masuk dalam badan. Contohnya, like if you watch the movie Amazing Spider-Man, you would see a uh, the villain is a lizard, right? So how did he become a lizard? He took the DNA of the lizard, okay? They call cross animal hybrid DNA mutations through genetic engineering. But the idea is also why did he end up becoming a chicha himself? This is not chicha man that we see by Malaysia. This is Amazing Spider-Man. All right. So yeah, it's impossible. Tapi he could, it could be possible in the near future, you wouldn't know, right? Uh, there is signs and laws prohibiting that. But theoretically, it's possible. But we don't want him to become a lizard, can? We just want that ability. All he wanted was, he wanted his arm back, right? So why did he become a lizard? Because hormonal changes. And also, when you're inducing a new hormones to your body, your body is going to face a lot of differences. And it's nearly impossible, as you stated. So, but our body is very specific. You cannot transplant a different a pig's heart into a human's body. We cannot do that, right? It'll just change everything. Walaupun hati babi dengan manusia sangat sama, and there is so much of similarities when it comes to chromosomes and all. Some things are very specific, and there is a very detailed study has to be done before we can execute. Okay. So many things happen um, in our, the movies we watch, but it's not really possible in the near future when it comes to biology. So, but there are many restrictions, okay? So one of the restrictions is the receptors. They are just extremely specific. So hormone A boleh masuk kepada receptor A je. Kita boleh ambil hormone B masuk dalam receptor A. In simple terms, that is how specific this is. Now, you asked what is a gland? The gland is a structure which secretes a specific chemical substance or a substances. Okay? So, as I said, salivary gland is what makes you have saliva in your tongue. Okay? So, if you are thirsty or your, your mouth is dry, meaning the gland is unable to secrete, right? So, automatically, the message will be triggered to your body to drink water. So, this is how our body works. So you have sweat gland, gastric gland, thyroid gland, and also salivary gland. Okay. Now a gland secretes chemical into the bloodstream, some other part of the body. Okay. Now blood capillaries and hormones are secreted into the blood. Okay. Nampak? The red color ones is the blood capillaries, meaning that is where the blood is rushing in your body. Okay. And the hormones are directly secreted into the blood. Maksudnya, they don't need a specific pathway. Macam they tak perlukan exon ke, all of that tadi. The, the hormone is just gonna diffuse into the bloodstream. Faham tak? Because it's just a chemical signal, right? They can just masuk. Since your body is a chemical, biological body system, 
it's possible. So some other part of the body, maksudnya, the chemical is secreted, skin surface, chemicals produced by the glands. Okay, perasan tak, your, your sometimes our face becomes oily, right? So why it becomes oily? We have to think about it as well. Badan kita is a perfect system, right? So it has a reason why it's secreting oil. So there are some uh, women, even guys sometimes, they just don't like the oil in their face. They will use some swaps and all to just, you know, remove the oil every single time. But you need to understand this oil is there for a purpose. Okay, this oil is there to clean your skin, right, to protect your skin, to remove the excess dirt in your skin. Banyak purpose there, right? To cool down pun ada juga. So, by just removing this oil every single time it comes out and you don't like it and you're going to put products that is going to remove that oil, you're going to end up other problems like your skin will be too dry, mungkin ada pimple, blackheads, uh, blockheads, like whatever lah. All these issues some people face in the facial uh, industry. So they need to understand their skin, how the skin is reacting to the environment. So all of that will look faham. Sebab tu, nowadays with the uh, advancement of technology in um, makeup industry itself, it's very detailed. They'll ask you what skin type you have, right, before you even buy a product. Is your skin a dry skin or it's a moist skin or oily skin? Sama dengan rambut juga. Your scalp, is it going to be a dry scalp or it's a normal scalp? Macam tu lah. So, why? Because the chemicals produced by the glands and they have, they will serve their purposes as well. Okay, now glands in the body are, we call it exocrine gland dengan endocrine gland. Apakah perkataan EXO and ENDO? You should know by now, EXO dengan ENDO, what does it coming to mean? Right, you need to understand that. EXO tu apa? ENDO tu apa? Can you explain? Endo inside, right? Okay. Yes. So, exo is? Should be outside lah. Okay. So, basically, is, let's go with endo first. Nampak tak kat situ? The endocrine gland, okay, it secretes directly into the hormone. The, the, it secretes the hormone directly into the capillary. So, secretes hormone have no duct, ductless, have a rich blood supply. Okay. Exo pula, as you can see here, they are the duct, okay? And it releases the enzyme, as we can see here, parts of the body, meaning when it comes to exocrine glands, all right, it secretes a enzyme into a duct. So we need a pathway. So prior dia sampai kepada other parts of the body. Remember when I say uh, glands are ductless glands, okay? But there is also exocrine gland and endocrine gland. Endocrine glands are on ductless gland, glands. Lah. Exocrine glands are, they secrete enzymes into a duct. So that it brings, this is what is a hormone. So basically, a hormone. Hormone is a chemical which produced by an endocrine gland. It travels into the bloodstream and has an effect on the target organ. Okay, contohnya apa? So let's look at this like this way. When a chemical, okay, which is produced by the endocrine gland, okay, it could be any chemical. Let's say the, um, what chemical do you want? Okay, let's call it, okay, let's just take growth hormone for an example, okay? So it travels into the bloodstream and has an effect on your organ. So your organ ni apa? It's going to be your cells or your tissues and all, right? So hormone akan secrete masuk dalam capillary, okay, blood capillaries, okay, go through the blood, reach the target cells in remote tissues. Example, let's say this growth hormone is secreted in your back of your body, okay, but you want this to, this, hormone to reach your um, toes so that you want your toes to grow longer as well, right? So that's how it's being transmitted and it targets the cells in the remote tissues for them to activate and trigger to grow. So that's just an example. 
right? So the bloodstream transport hormones throughout the body. Each hormone acts on a certain type of tissue called target tissue. Okay, apakah itu target tissue? I think by looking into the diagram, you can see secreting vessel. Okay, hormones masuk dalam blood vessel sampai kepada target cells. Not a target cell. If they have no receptors, it won't be secreted towards them. Simple, kan? So, there are cells in your body who doesn't need a specific hormones. So, by nature, they don't have receptors. So, they don't need these hormones as well. Now, endocrine system is made up of endocrine glands and hormones. The glands are ductless. The glands release hormones directly into the bloodstream. Let's look at endocrine glands. Ni position of the main endocrine glands in the human. Okay, we have pituitary gland. Okay, look at the hypothalamus. Thyroid, thyroid gland. The adrenaline gland. Okay, we call it adrenal gland. Also pancreas, ovaries and testes. Okay. So name the endocrine organs. All right. So I know this is quite hard. But it's really simple. Can you name it? A to upper, B to upper, C to upper, D to upper, E to upper, F to upper, G to upper, H to upper. Okay. Is it possible? D definitely it's that's this lah. E is ovaries. Plus two you have pancreas, thyroid, your hypothalamus, your pituitary gland, right? Can only name D. <laughs> All right, moving on. The main human endocrine glands and their secretions. Okay, we will go in detail regarding each and every gland. Okay, it's best for you to take notes. Kapun lukis juga. All right, so the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland control much of the endocrine system. All right. So as you can see here, you should already know what is the function of hypothalamus and the pituitary gland okay now we are going to know this is a new term pituitary gland is going to be your master gland right because it controls the other endocrine glands they much um the main control system for your hormonal system in your body especially your endocrine system so apakah itu pituitary gland is a small red gray gland weighs about 0.5 gram size of a pea Okay, green color P, we know, right? Okay, P and cons. Yeah, that size, it's what's gonna control this whole endocrine system of your body. So, hangs from the base of the brain by a short stalk. It's a link between nervous system and many endocrine glands. So, how small is the pituitary gland? Okay, as you can see here, it's, it's literally one centimeter maybe. So, that is what's responsible for your whole hormonal changes in your body system. Now, hypothalamus. It controls the pituitary gland. It receives information from the nervous system. You will see its role in nervous system juga kan. Okay, they uh, integrate with cerebrum and how with um, mulgata and also your spinal cord. So hypothalamus controls the pituitary gland. It receives information from the nervous system so that it could trigger your other plants to carry out their functions. Okay. Now, hypothalamus collects information from other regions of the brain. Okay. Blood vessels passing through it. And what does the hypothalamus do with this information? That is your question. And the answer is really simple you would it would trigger other hormones right okay so how does the pituitary gland respond by releasing hormones which directly or indirectly regulate the activity of all other endocrine glands macam mana ini dicapai okay so you can see here in this gambar raja endocrine cells of the anterior pituitary gland okay i know these are new terms so you can um, understand it slowly, no problem. Okay, what's the neurosectory cell? Blood vessel releasing hormones from hypothalamus. Okay, what you need to is 
So I said hypothalamus and the pituitary gland is going to be responsible, uh, responsible by releasing hormones, right? Okay, but send a message, a chemical message to these glands. This is how from pituitary hormone they yeah, can pass through STSH or ACTH or FSH or LH. Okay, so each of it will go and hit the specific organelles, and then from them they serve their functions. Okay, which what parts of the body does the pituitary gland affect? Almost everything, especially the main endocrine system, definitely the memory glands, adrenaline, adrenal, thyroid, bones, ovaries, testes, kidneys, and the uterus. Now, hypothalamus makes hormones which are stored and released from the posterior pituitary gland, controls the release of hormones from the anterior, anterior pituitary gland. So, nampak tak? Di kita ada two pituitary glands, the anterior and posterior, meaning the front or belakang. Lah. So, the, the hormones, um, who's going to be responsible is the hypothalamus. They can synthesize, okay, hormone that can be stored and released from the posterior pituitary glands, okay, and also the release of anterior pituitary gland. So, what is posterior pituitary gland, what it does? So, Posterior does not synthesize any hormones, but stores and release two hormones, which is the A, um, or vasopressin lah. Okay, so we call it ADH hormone. Ataupun si toxin. So this is how it transmits. Dari pada brain, okay, it stores kan. It stores and release these hormones to the blood vessels. Now, this is how. Hypothalamus and posterior pituitary gland works by. Okay, so the hypothalamus. Can you see this new slide? Kenapa dia tak terap? Um, Shamal, let me know which slide are you still at? Okay. All right, it's changed already. All right, so the posterior pituitary gland. Now the brain. Okay, so it's over here, right? The ADH and oxytocin, eh? Okay, so I've explained about this already, right? The posterior pituitary gland, what up? Next one is called the hypothalamus lah. So hypothalamus and posterior pituitary gland. Okay, dah keluar dah. Alright, cool. So hypothalamus, hormone is made and packaged in the cell body of neuron. Okay, ini back to, to basic juga kan. Cell body of neuron duduk kat mana, son, dendrite, uh, all of that you have to. That's why I say do revision regarding 3.2. Sebab you will see similarities and you understand the differences as well. So now, hormone is made and packaged in the cell body of neuron in the hypothalamus. Vesicles are transported down the cells. Vesicles containing these hormones are stored in the posteri posterior pituitary gland. Okay, daripada hypothalamus, sampai kepada posterior pituitary gland, lepas tu hormones akan release kepada blood. So apakah hormones dia? It's ADH and oxytocin. Now, recap. Hormones are stored and released from the posterior pituitary are ADH and oxytocin. This is what you got to remember. Okay. Hormones yang keluar stored and released by posterior pituitary gland, okay, which was initially um, secreted by hypothalamus, are two hormones, ADH and oxytocin, which will be transmitted into the blood system. So as you can see in this picture, you can see the brain, the hypothalamus, and how it works, cell body, axon, as to neurosecretary, um, secretary cells of the hypothalamus. Sampai kepada posterior pituitary, ADH adalah hormone, oxytocin adalah hormone, target dia kepada kidney tubules, 
oxytocin target dia adalah uterine muscles and mammary glands okay ni baru posterior now let's look at the functions first okay functions of oxytocin so targets adalah uterus and mammary glands so again this whole topic you have to understand the concept and also kena hafal banyak kena buat banyak nota to understand gland apa hormon apa target organ apa the pathway macam mana everything all right so you need to do a lot of notes now so uterus memory glands are the targets for oxytocin you do know what is uterus right mesti pernah belajar topic reproduction dah belajar ke so we studied in meiosis you probably would have understand right now later on we'll study as well no worries absolutely great so okay so how very well was it what is uterus and i'm pretty sure you know what is memory glands as well so the contraction of the uterus during birth okay when a female is having a kid a baby right the uterus the zygote is forming into a baby right so what happens is contraction the relaxation of the muscles at the uterus part okay this is the hormone responsible for that oxytocin ejection of milk from the nipple meaning when females are having babies they have to breastfeed right so that process the ejection of milk the ones which promotes and helps the ejection of milk from the nipple is oxytocin now oxytocin is released into the blood stream from posterior parts of the pituitary gland i'm sorry the picture is quite blurry we need a maximum bosakan lah so let's look at the first step sucking of mother's nipples triggers nerve impulses so we have a organ which is the skin okay on the part of a uh, female's um body parts the nipples okay so over there there is nerve impulses so when the baby is sucking from the mother's nipples it's going to create um it's going to transmit signals which will trigger nerve impulses from the particular region and that nerve impulses akan sampai kepada mana step 2 oxytocin will be released into blood stream from posterior part of pituitary gland okay in simple terms nerve impulses that trigger ah okay akan sampai kepada hypothalamus okay Hypo hypothalamus okay and then pituitary gland pituitary gland where it already have it storing the uh, oxytocin dengan adh dia akan secrete okay secrete via macam mana blood stream so oxytocin akan be secreted from the posterior part of pituitary gland okay through the blood stream okay and that oxytocin is what's going to help the ejection of milk from the nipple right okay so it will be uh, passing to the towards the mammary glands so oxytocin causes the muscle around the alveoli um, to contract to squeeze the milk to the uh, nipple okay therefore when the baby is sucking it gets the milk from the mother all right so i hope you understand this concept now let's look at adh shamel farm that cool yeah very cool so adh is basically targeting the kidney all right so what is adh and its purposes is something we need to understand enhances water reabsorption in the kidney okay so as you can see over here we are working out right okay when we work out what happens right so the gamba lari sikit okay in simple terms what i can tell you is when we work out there's a thing called uh it secretes this homeo concentration okay so they keluarkan uh, your sweat right right so when you're losing water right okay so what happens then when you're losing water what happens to your body are you going to how are you going to feel thirsty okay cool so you're going to feel thirsty when you are 
um, losing water in your body. So this hormone, the ADH function, dia basically it's made by the hypothalamus juga macam tadi, okay, in the brain and stored in the posterior pituitary gland juga. So apa yang you're missing in this slide is that sama macam memory gland tadi. So apabila air keluar dari badan, it signals your body, signal akan sampai kepada hypothalamus, kepada posterior pituitary gland di mana ADH is being stored. So it tells your kidney how much water to conserve. So ADH akan memberi signal okay, kepada kidney. It will say, it will tell the kidney berapa air you can conserve. If not, every time you're going to sweat, you're going to release all the water from your body. And that's not cool. You're going to be super thirsty later on, right? So at, after a certain level, the sweat will be at extreme, right? And then your kidney must conserve your water because water is really important for our body to regulate very well, right? So ADH constantly regulates and balances the amount of water in your blood. Nampak? Step 4 kat sini. Yang step 1, signal telah diberi. Step 2, step 3 semua kat kepala lah, pituitary gland, hypothalamus, secretion. Okay. Step 4, ADH is secreted. And then step 5, ADH acts on the kidney, reabsorbs more water in plasma. So plasma volume akan naik. Okay, you probably wouldn't understand what is plasma volume and all by now. Tapi function dia yang anda perlu faham adalah ADH constantly regulates the balances of amount in your amount of water in your blood. So higher water concentration increases the volume and pressure of your blood juga. So kalau pressure tinggi maksudnya air dalam badan pun tinggi juga. So your ADH hormones are responsible for all of that. So as I stated, it starts from hypothalamus, posterior pituitary gland. So kita panggil vasoprocin lah. Okay, dia akan masuk oleh blood vessel ataupun kidney for fluid reabsorption. So it increase arterial pressure ataupun blood volume ataupun vascular resistance. Ni semua high level. Tapi yang anda kena faham is how it works, function of it and the process of it. Okay, ni function of ADH. Basically, as you can see here, increase permeability to water by distal convoluted tube, collecting tubule, uh, glomerulus and proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, ni semua, as I said, it looks really high level. Okay, what you got to understand is later you will learn what is medulla, loop of Henle, ureter and all. And you will learn in chapter 3 juga. Okay, especially when you go to digestion and all, lagi lah ikan belajar. So ADH punya function is this, when it secretes, it will bagi tahu your kidney berapa kena control the reabsorption of water and all. So that is basically how the process and what are the hormones um, and function of oxytocin. Okay, recap eh, ni posterior pituitary R, ADH oxytocin. Sekarang kita dah belajar dah pasal posterior pituitary glands and its hormones. Ada apa-apa soalan tak? Before we go to the next one. Ramal, is there any question? You want to see the ADH slide? Nia. One with the most pictures. Okay. So, don't have to confuse much. Dia simple je. Daripada hypothalamus, macam tadi. Okay. Dia akan produce ADH. Alright. And then, it will be stored in the pituitary gland. Okay. Or we call it, um, what we call it? Call it the posterior pituitary gland, right? So I don't know which pictures you check ni. Okay, now with the posterior pituitary gland, it will be excreted towards the circulation of the body and water reabsorption from distal and collecting tubules. So yang you can faham is, 
when the ADH is uh, released, okay, it will trigger all of these tubules to um, reabsorb the water from your body. Okay, so the, the your urine, okay, your sweat, everything will be controlled by ADH. So, if body dehydrated, we will increase the ADH. Okay, so by more water is absorbed, right? So, kalau body hydrated pula, okay, kalau ada banyak air dalam badan, ADH pula kurang. Oleh itu, less water is absorbed. So, we get a diluted urine. Okay. Macam ni lah in simple terms. You urine, right? You urinate, right? When you urinate, is if your urine is, yes, we pee more lah. Okay, let me give you a, a simple example. Okay. If your urine is concentrated, meaning it's not diluted what does that mean you need to drink more water right so if you need to drink more water your body is telling you that your body is dehydrated okay so apakah penyebab your urine is so concentrated it's because more water is absorbed towards your body and only less water is being released from your body therefore Disarakan water yang sikit release dengan all your urea and all. That is why it is concentrated. That is why it's yellowish or macam tu lah. Alright. So meaning, when the body is dehydrated, ADH akan tambah. Sebab kita nak simpan air dalam badan. Okay. Apa akan jadi bila you hydrated teruk? Meaning you drink so much of water. You're drinking around 2 liters every hour. Okay. Or you're drinking 4 liters per day. 1 gallon per day. Okay. Your urine will be crystal clear. Why? Because your urine will be diluted. Meaning with all these unnecessary body chemicals that's going to be out from your urine, especially your urea, okay, uric acids, all of that is going to be diluted with water. Because your body dah cukup hydrated dah. Tak perlu banyak ADH. Faham tak? So disuatkan tak perlu banyak ADH, there is no need water reabsorption ataupun recollection dalam badan, badan kita. Sebab less water is absorbed, more water is secreted. So itulah how you want to connect. Okay, kalau your urine is concentrated, meaning you got to drink water. Okay, why you got to drink water? Sebab your body is not allowing water to be keluarkan. Sebab ADH is high there now in your body. Your ADH is using your water for the body system. Okay, kalau your urine is so crystal clear, Meaning ADH tak perlu function sangat pun Sebab your body tengah ada enough water to run systematically So which is the best situation now? Drink a lot of water or not drink a lot of water? Definitely to drink more water right? So why? Because when you drink water what happens is you will be losing less uh, using less of ADH So you're saving energy in your body as well So banyakkan lah minum air Shamil, can you understand now? Cool, now you understand. Great. Okay, so with that done, let's go to anterior pituitary gland. Tadi posterior, sekarang pula anterior. Okay, this is the behind part lah. We call this the true endocrine gland juga because it produces both tropic and non-tropic hormones. So, you probably be wondering apakah itu tropic dengan non-tropic. Why are they more new terms, right? So let's go simple, right? Hypothalamus, we know already. Anterior pituitary dah tahu dah. Posterior pituitary dah tahu dah. Posterior ada dua uh, function. ADH dengan oxytocin. ADH untuk apa? Water reabsorption dalam kidney. Okay. So how about anterior apa? Uh, another one is oxytocin. Oxytocin is for the memory glands for female who are breastfeeding. Okay. Anterior pula apa? So that is what we're going to know, know now. Note, tropic hormones from hypothalamus controls the release of hormones from the anti anterior pituitary glands. Okay. Tropic hormones adalah daripada hypothalamus, dia akan uh, going to control the release of hormones from the anterior pituitary. Okay, what we're going to see that's here. Hormones released by the anterior pituitary glands are TSH, ACTH, LH, F, S, H. So again, you got to take a lot of notes. Okay, need some short forms. Okay, so tropins or trophics. Okay, this is how we label their 
hormones. Tapi itu semua advance juga, no problem. You need to know what's prolactin and growth hormone as well. Okay, now let's go to the first hormone when it comes to the anterior pituitary gland. Okay. Notice I'm only highlighting the SPM level. Okay, ni sometimes banyak additional knowledge juga lah. Okay, so tropic hormones of anterior pituitary glands are, they're the four tropic hormones. Follicle stimulating hormones. By now you should know what is follicles. Okay, luteinizing hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, lepas tu adrenocorticotrophic hormone, ACTH. So these are all hormones name. Okay. And we, like tadi we had anterior and posterior. Sekarang inside anterior, it's going to be breaking down of um, trophic and trophins. Okay. So this is how it is. I received a message. So Aisha is joins joining us. Hi Aisha. So today I'm talking about um, this. Okay. So. I hope you could uh, later join in our YouTube recap and you can catch back. But it's good that you join. All right. So I just explained about posterior pituitary gland and function there. Now I'm going to teach about anterior pituitary gland. This is 3.3. .3, okay. So the roles of hormones in our body, especially in the endocrine system. Now, there is, as I said, there is four tropics hormone, right? Follicle FSH, luteinizing hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone and adrenal corticotrophic. Okay, I think I will end the class here. So Bob, I think Aisha is a form four student. <laughs> All right, uh, form five class three to four. Dah habis dah, by right? Okay, so Shamel, did you understand what I taught you today, based on the picture graphs and about posterior pituitary gland? All right, cool. So you understand that is really good. So next week we will focus more on anterior lah. Okay, we go slow by slow. So topic ni memang besar. There is a lot to understand. So if you guys understood that, that is great. Okay, with that I would like to end from five class for biology.